Hello guys and welcome to another status report highlight, this time for the week of the 19th of January 2015. And as always we're going to start off with producer Brian Hicks, who has mentioned, It's been a busy week over here in the DAISY development offices. With work pushing forward on 053, the team is focused on the last few remaining major issues before the push. As we go into test, fix, regression with 053, there are several things every early access user should be aware of. We will be analysing builds daily for 053 Stable Branch Candidate. Once we have a build, Stable Branch servers will be brought offline for the update. The 053 update will include a public Hive reset. This will not affect private shards. The 053 update has a good amount of security fixes, as well as content additions, support for admin logs and should roll out with the new battle eye protection. Over the next few days you'll see us roll out incremental updates to experimental branch as we iterate towards a good 053 candidate. For those who operate servers, remember, admin logs will be accessible on both public and private shard servers and contain the following info. Connections, disconnections with in-game name and Steam 64 ID as well as information like player X killed player Y, player X damaged player Y, and direct chat text. So after the battle eye update, if you still manage to get kicked by a legitimate speed hacker, you can then just look up their name in the logs and give them a nice swift kick in the bollocks with a ban. In addition to the changes and updates above, 053 will include, but is not limited to, upgrading of fireplaces all the way to a furnace, proper consumption of fuel for fireplaces, crafted leather clothing, anti-duplication fixes, anti-cheating fixes, a new island featuring the new prison complex, changes to Scalisti Island, vehicle persistence, and so much more. Check out what Higgs had to say last weekend at PAX South about the new Battle Eye and anti-cheat update. Well, you tell me, you'll, I don't you'll, know. You'll listen to this, you'll like this. Um, <laughs> we're rolling out 5.3 towards the end of the month, <laughs> and uh, the really the core focus for 5.3 was uh, being able to roll out some of the work that's taken us a while to get done addressing security. Uh, okay. Multiplayer games are rife with cheating. And uh, I mean, if, if Valve can't get it right, like 100%, yeah. I don't stand a chance. But I won't stop trying. And the team has, put to, has worked with uh, Eugen, our, our associate producers, worked very closely with BattleEye. Um, Merrick, our uh, lead programmer, has yep. constantly been working on tracking down with our, our security team known uh, cheats, known uh, vulnerabilities in, in the current build, and uh, 5.3 should roll out with, fingers crossed, everything's working right now when I left the office, uh, the more active uh, scanning battle I deployed. Awesome. Um, our, I got word from uh, the QA testers that uh, mostly focus on cheats, and they said that every known cheat that they have purchased uh, or tracked down, either public or private, does not operate under the new battle eye system. That's awesome. Um, and every known major security vulnerability, whether it be people forcing you to do stuff and such, was patched a couple weeks ago, but obviously we have to wait for the major update. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm fully aware that saying that we're, we're approaching this head on, um, well, might be a challenge to those that like to cheat in games. But, like I said, I, I've got no life outside of DayZ, so I will, uh, <laughs> I will continue with my team to, to make this a core focus. But it, it, the important thing to understand with this is that as we create Daisy around moving from legacy uh, RV engine into our new, our own engine that is, you know, being kind of has to be built on the side. You can't just mm. put it in and say oh, it will kind of work. Like an right. engine needs to, to function properly. As this gets modularly moved in, um, the, it, it just you have to understand that being part of early access means that there will be holes, especially if we have to keep those updates out often. Mm -hmm. So the best thing people can do. So use a feedback tracker, talk to me on Twitter, and, and we'll take this stuff head on. And I think 5.3 is going to be a good update for this guy. As DayZ hits 3 million units sold, we look forward to the possibility that 2015 holds for DayZ. With the project slowly able to reap the rewards of the hard work put in by the engine and gameplay programmers over the months prior, I for one cannot wait to begin to roll these changes out to Stable Branch. Again, keep an eye on Experimental Branch Daily as we iterate towards the 053 release. As always, I encourage you to head over to the Development Discussion subforums at official DayZ forums. Department leads are always available there to discuss ongoing development of DayZ with you. That's all we have from producer Brian Hicks, and signs off by saying that he's convinced that the Pax Pox caused the Chinarusian outbreak. Next up, we have lead game designer Peter, who mentions quite a bit about new items and features coming to DayZ 053 and future updates. First off, 
I would like to mention some new items which are ready and will be introduced in one of the upcoming updates. Melee weapons badge consists from the mix of different items like a bayonet for AK, a broom, mace, paddle, hay hook, steak knife, lead pipe, and hatchet. We didn't admit firearms too, and you can await FN Trombone, which can be disassembled into parts to save your inventory space, which makes it a perfect firearm for those who wants to carry a second firearm directly in their inventory. And then there's the flare gun, which was waiting for some time to be configured, as we didn't have possibility to attach the new light source to the projectiles till now, which means that now you are free to light up a surrounding environment or use it as a signal for others. We also prepared prototype for the bear trap, which is in fact far from the desired implementation, as there is currently not a proper trigger available for us to use it with the zombie and animal AI, which is still in development. Only players will be caught by it for now, but hey, you can hunt animals even without the bear trap, which can be skinned to get pelts already, and now we added a process to produce pieces of tanned leather. Also a bit simplified for now as a placeholder, you probably can guess that tanned leather can have some usability, which is the sewing of a set of leather clothes, including shoes, pants, jacket, vest, hat, and bag. In the future, preparing tanned leather and dyeing leather clothes will be connected to barrels, which are currently being prepared by the art team. As counterbalance to the recent addition of the craftable clothes, we have also added brand new quilted jacket, and in the future it is very possible that the down jacket will be pulled down from the loot tables, as it has plenty of clipping issues due to its mass, and it will be replaced with the quilted jacket. To please those of you who fell in love with cultivating plants, we added a new plant which yields one of the most loved vegetables, the zucchini. Peter then finishes off with, Well I almost forgot to mention a new group identification, which is naturally optional and can be used to form clans, teams or just stand out from the masses. Armbands. They are created through crafting and comes in different easily recognisable colours and they are fully visible directly on a player's arm. I'm glad we are pushing customization of characters further down the road, and I can assure you that we are not stopping here. That's all for the status report this week for the 19th of January 2014. But I have got a little extra for you guys from lead artist Chris Torchia. Many of you have heard of the new zombie templates. The plan with these is to produce a zombie doll, which we can have an artist dress up with various survivor clothing and bake to a single texture on an optimized mesh. This would increase the amount of visual variety without impacting performance if when players see large amounts of zombies at once in the same scene, this approach also creates an opportunity to introduce some degree of variety to the zombie bodies themselves. And there we are folks, there's the extra little bit for you guys as a treat. I hope you enjoyed this week's status report highlight. As always, all links will be in the description, which includes the full pack self-interview with Brian Hicks and Sacriel, the status report, which I always recommend you read in full for the most amount of information that it holds, as well as for Daisy TV for all your latest Daisy news and information. And for now, I'll see you peeps next time.